So I just wanted to get this on a video. And you know, I, we seam sealed it from the outside. Okay, and you can see how these poles. Now the reason that this popped into my head was because the tent blew across the yard and it damaged the tent right along in here. And I kind of realized, you know, I seam sealed, you know, on the inside of the tent along there, but I didn't do along the poles from the inside. I did it from the outside. And you can see that seam, see that seam right there and that seam right there. So guess what I'm going to do now? I'm going to hit this sucker from the inside too. I don't want to get wet, people. I'm done being wet. And uh, so we're going to hit this. We're going to hit this hard. This is going to take me probably another couple hours. And uh, but I just kind of wanted to show you, you know, what I'm doing. And, and and if I hadn't damaged the tent, I probably would have never thought of this. See how that that right there, you know. So we're gonna. I'm going to move these poles out of the way, and I'm just going to seam seal the hell out of that from the inside of the tent. So here we go again, and uh, and by like I told you, I bought another twenty-two dollar tube of seam seal. And by the way, just just to let you know what the product is, because if you don't watch my other videos, this is the LD Seam Grip Plus WP. And buy the bigger one. I mean, don't buy them little. They got them little shits for like seven ninety nine, and they ain't worth a crap. You know, get the big one, man. You know, if you're going to seam seal a tent properly, and I, and look at this, this is just a small two person tent. You're going to need, you're going to need the 20, I know, okay, I know $22 is a lot of money, but guess what? When you're in the forest and you want to be dry, this is what you want, people. This is what you want. All right, so let's, let's talk about this for one second. So I just spent another two two and a half, three hours working on this tent. And uh, really, I think it's almost more effective to seam the seals from the inside of the tent because I could see where that fabric was getting kind of frayed and it just soaked up that seam sealer like a magnet all the way around the tent up at the top. And uh, I wouldn't have done it except that I put <laughs> two holes in the tent by letting it blow across my lawn and scrape on the concrete. Uh, and, uh, and I realized, oh, damn, I better do something about that. So all I could do is seam seal these. I don't know what else you would do. Oh, well, actually, I could probably, you know, what I'll do is I'll put a piece of Gorilla Tape over top of those two holes. Uh, that should should hold it now that I've got it seam sealed really well. And yeah, actually, actually that's what I'll do. Um, so that should solve that problem. And uh, um, so, yeah, let it, let it blow across the yacht lawn like an idiot. But uh, so what I'm telling you, okay, let's let's just talk about this for just one second, okay? Now think about it. I could get a hotel room, and uh, these days I dare say to get a four-star, five-star hotel room, you're looking at about $150 a night. Now, what did I spend seam seal in this tent? $22. Now, because I have a Florida pass, I can camp just about free in any Florida campground and I can camp for seven dollars in a in a national forest campground so when you think about it one night one night in this tent and I've covered the cost of that twenty two dollar seam sealer and now I bought another tube of twenty two dollar seam sealer that's coming this Tuesday uh, now I'm going to put that on the Cabela's tent so you do the math all right so you figure, uh, yeah, oh, God, I'm going to sleep in a tent. Oh, my God, how horrible, how horrible. A lot of people just think it's the worst thing ever. I, To me, staying in a hotel room is the worst thing ever. You know, I'd much rather sleep in this tent. And if you've got, you know, some some air mattresses, which I'll have in here, it's very comfortable. And, uh, and of course, you got to have good weather. You don't want to be in this thing, hot, steamy, you know, sweaty weather you know and you know but but you know what if you've got some cold showers nearby which i will have on my uh when i go up to um i think it's called tory pines or the highest place in florida in the panhandle you know so look at it so if i just stay two nights in this tent i have paid for all that seam sealer 
And, uh, and, 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 and so I guess the point of this video is to say that it's not just important to seam seal the outside of the tent. And we, we, we were seam sealing the inside of the tent where it leaked before, but you know what? I went ahead and did the rest of the tent. So what have I got into this tent? Probably about two, two days of work, maybe 16 hours. Uh, but I guarantee you this thing's going to be a bombshell and I'm not going to get wet. And, uh, and like I said, this is just an overnight tent, you know, and, uh, and now that I've got another $22 tube, of seam sealer and uh we'll we'll work on this cabela's alaskan guide tent for tent i've never actually slept in it so uh but i bought that for the trip back and of course the car broke down so let, let's let's get on to that story just a little bit okay so uh you know i was watching scotty kilmer and uh you know if you watch him on youtube he's a great car care nut uh, mechanic and uh, I tell you what I love watching the guy I think he's, he's really wonderful to enjoy he must have a staff of people that work for him or something I don't if he does it all on his own more power to him I can't believe he can make the quality videos that he does but anyway so uh, he said that the 2012 Hyundai Sonata uh, which is what I sold okay before making this trip um, has engine problems and uh, and so at any point on a 10,000 mile journey, that, that engine just could have blown up. Boom. Imagine the expense, you know, so now I'm going to tow the car in and, uh, you know, I, I have all state, uh, you know, just like AAA or, you know, whatever you've got for your car, uh, towing, but you know, that, that there's always limitations to that. And like I said, they wouldn't pay for my hotel room because I was able to drive the car into the dealer, you know, in the future, you know, if you ever break down, make sure you tow your car. <laughs> because <laughs> then they'll pay for your hotel room you know isn't that fucking ridiculous oh my god these stupid companies but uh so yeah so i made the mistake of actually getting the car to the dealer and uh and then paying for the i ended up paying for the hotel room myself because they wouldn't pay for it because they said oh but you didn't tow the car it didn't have to be towed i said well yeah i limped it into the dealer to try to save you money well they didn't care about that that's just their rules but anyway, so let's say that I'm driving that Hyundai Sonata and I get it up on the mountain and I'm, I'm camping in the National Forest and boom, the engine explodes. Holy moly, what are you going to do? Uh, imagine, I mean, so they're only going to pay for like, I don't know, it's like 50 miles or 100 miles or whatever it is towing. So yeah, let's say I got to tow that car 300 miles to get it to a damn dealer. You know, so now I'm out of pocket, you know, a hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars in towing. And then, you know, then I got to stay in a hotel room. And, uh, you know, of course, Allstate would pay for that, you know, because I do have the, the $99 protection through them. And of course, now I got roadside protection through Toyota. Um, but anyway, so, so, and then, and, and then what, what would the, a new engine cost on that car? Probably. I bet it'd be three thousand five hundred dollars, uh, depending. And then you don't even know if you're getting a good engine. You know, who knows? You know, if you if you're in in a, a foreign state, you know, a Democrat state or wherever you are, you know, and they're going to repair the car, or they might just tell you, hey, man, you know, just total the car, man, you, you're you're done. So then, what are you going to do? Now you got to get home. So, yes, I bought the new Toyota Prius Prime. And uh, we've done a lot of videos on that. And I've rest assured, unless somebody just destroys my car and slams into me, and I'm going to be super careful, uh, I should be good to go. So now we got the tent good to go. we got the car good to go. I'm going to wash that Toyota Prius Prime. i got to get up on the roof and do the leaves. I'm going to trim the bushes one last time, and then we're on the road. Woohoo! Let's, let's do the mantra. Freedom! Oh, freedom! Freedom. Good to live in the free Republican state of Florida under the great leadership of Governor DeSantis. Ooh, I tell you, sniffing that seam sealant, <clears throat> just like sniffing glue, baby. <laughs> so this was the coup de grace. You know, I, I, like I said, I let the tent blow across the yard and uh, it uh, put that hole in here and then it occurred to me i mean what the seam sealing on here what better time to put a little bit of gorilla tape and so i put it both outside and inside the tent so that should uh 
you know, that, that's the coup de grace, right? We've got the, the seam sealing on that hole. It was just a little tiny hole, but you know what? I mean, I tell you what, a little tiny hole can be a big deal in a thunderstorm. So we got the Gorilla Tape on here, and with that seam seal, it, it should really adhere that Gorilla Tape to the tent um, and on the inside and out. And that way, you know, when that pole pushes up uh, against the tent, um, we should be good to go. So I just wanted to get the coup de grace, you know. Um, and like I said, I, I Gorilla Taped around the corners of the tent uh last uh, on the last trip to reinforce those and uh i you know i mean i could buy a new tent you know but this back in the day i mean this was a really expensive tent i think i spent like four or five hundred dollars you know back in 2000 you know because bibbler bibbler you know look at them bibbler tents bibbler tents they were they were the number one uh name in tents and uh, you know what? I mean, when you think about it, 21 years later, you know, here I am using the the tent. Now, the, granted, the fabric has deteriorated, and I've kept it out in a hot garage and and everything. But I, you know, other than you know me being stupid and letting it blow across <laughs> concrete, getting a hole right here, tent's in pretty doggone good shape, right? Just saying. All right, that's it. That's it for this video. Peace out and uh, be free. So I just wanted to make a quick video. This is the GoPro with no external mic. And, um, I mean, you know, the problems I've had with the phone using external mic. And we have a big delivery coming on Tuesday. Um, and we'll see. We'll see because I'm going to try using the external mic with the GoPro. And we'll make a video with that, and then we'll make a video with the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. Uh, try to use the external mic on that. I don't know if it's going to work. Um, but this is with the media mod on the, uh, the GoPro. So, what did I want to talk about in this video? You know, I just kind of wanted to say, um, you know, life is a progression. Okay, so I'll just give you an example of today. All right, I, I, I knew that before I go on the trip, uh, the 10,000 mile journey, that I needed to wash the car. So what was the first thing I had to do? Well, I had to trim the bush. <laughs> I planted in front of the, the uh, hose reel because I was lied to by the uh, landscape uh, place that the bush would only grow to be three feet tall and instead I have to trim it. Um, just to get to my hose reel and uh, yeah, I should pull it just pull it out, but uh, That's down the road. So to get to the hose reel I had to trim the hose reel. So look at the progression here So I got that done and then of course the battery died on the uh, the trimmer and then I thought well I guess I better you know before I go on the trip uh, I better trim all the damn bushes So I got that done today and of course I got to get my exercise and uh, we did that and uh, so you know, it's um and then, the, the, so the next thing I did was I washed the car, okay, and you've been through my series of videos, you know, we've got now an overnight tent, and look at the progression on the overnight tent. The first thing that I did was I seam sealed it uh, around the seams, okay, that didn't quite work out, okay, um, because we still got a little bit, you know, when I, and that was another big thing, you know, I had to test it in a big, huge rainstorm. So we put it out and we tested it and, uh, and then I thought, well, I'd better seam seal it along the, um, the poles because the poles press up against the, uh, uh, the tent fabric and it's an old tent. And I thought, well, you know, uh, we'll seam seal it. And, and all this was on the outside of the tent for the most part. And we got a little bit on the inside. You, you saw that. And so then, you know, it occurred to me, well, if I'm going to seam seal along the poles on the outside, why not seam seal along the poles on the inside? And I did that, you know, I didn't show that on a video, I didn't, you know, so, so, so now that the tent is seam sealed on the poles on the inside and on the outside, and of course I let the tent blow across the yard <laughs> and drag it along the concrete <laughs> and it tore a hole in the, in, the, in the tent. And so I seam sealed the hole and I thought, well, you know, that'll probably be adequate, but you know what, then I thought, well, why not just take some Gorilla Tape because I used the Gorilla Tape to reinforce the bottom of the tent. 
And, uh, and so I, I put the Gorilla Tape over the holes in the tent um, on top of the seam seal. So it should, be, it should be extra adhesive on there. And then let it dry for 24 hours. So look at the progression there. You see how life is a progression? I mean, just think about the trip. I was going to drive the Hyundai Sonata uh, 2012 all the way. and uh, But the last time I went, I took the 2013 Kia Sorento, and it broke down, and it cost me $3,000. Um, I, You know, horror stories. I was just listening to a guy on the radio. He, he got stuck in, in Hawaii. Uh, cost him $5,000 in hotel rooms and everything else, and now he's trying to get his money back. So what did I spend? Think about it. What did I spend for the Toyota Prius Prime? Well, $20,000, $29,000, and then, of course, with all the dealer fees and everything tacked onto it with taxes, $35,000, all right? So let's just say the Hyundai Sonata broke down, and, and watching Scotty Kilmer, he says the engine on those old Hondas, uh, they're questionable, let's just say. I don't, you know, I'm not trying to get myself in any legal territory. I hope the guy I sold it to is going to get a long life out of the car. I don't know. I, it, it was sold as is, you know. And I didn't know anything about this until I watched Scotty Kilmer. But suppose the car broke down while I'm on my 10,000 mile journey and it cost me, you know, let's say, you know, three, five thousand dollars to put a new engine in the car. So life is a progression. So look at the progression as we go along. So the first thing was to get the, the, the old car sold, buy the new car. Then it was to weapon up the, the new car with the 3M film and the, uh, the tinting. Okay, and, and, and then the tire, we had the problem with that. We had to go back and forth to Homosassa, Florida like five times and do all of that. You know, in the meantime, you know, I have to take care of my body. You know, I'm weaponing up the body. Today I was out. By the way, I'll show you on a future video uh, the new dumbbell set that I bought. Um, and uh, do I really need it? I got a gym here in the community. I don't need a dumbbell set. But I thought, you know, what the hell? I mean, it, and it was good, man. I, and I bet I'm going to be sore. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm going to be sore tomorrow. Because <laughs> I, I put a lot of weight on that dumbbell, and I carried it. I, I bet I carried it five miles today, and, uh, and I'm doing this number and this number and that number, you know, all the stupid stuff that I do to try to stay in shape. Um, so I'm weaponing up the body. We've weaponed up the car. We've weaponed up the tent. Um, you know, so um, I... Literally, I mean, I think, uh, and then of course the house, you know, I, I trimmed the bushes today. Now tomorrow I'm going to get up, I got to get up on the roof and I got to blow the gutters out, make sure the leaves are out of the gutters. Uh, like I said, life is a progression, right? See how we progress every single day? And, and so, you know, I know a lot of times we just think that the world gets overwhelming and that we'll never get there. And then look at, look at the videos that I'm doing, right? You know, I'm backing everything up to Rumble now because I'm expecting YouTube to take me down at any time because I'm a conservative, right? They don't want conservatives on YouTube, you know, with the censorship and everything. You know, some someday I'm going to say something that offends them and my channel will be gone on YouTube, you know. So, And I'm buried. I'm, <laughs> I'm way buried down in the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> By the way, I on Rumble now, I got uh, like uh, 1,033 views, and uh, it's growing because because I'm putting all my videos on Rumble to, to back them up. And then, of course, I'm backing them up to my servers. Like I said, life is a progression, you know. Uh, and way back, if you go back in my videos, I bought the new laptop for the trip. Uh, you know, we bought new videography equipment. We got the, the GoPro. And who knows what the sound quality is going to be like on this. So that's it. Just want to make a quick uh, sit down and talking fireside chat video. I call them motorcycle chats on my channel. I, I just haven't developed a new category. I, um, so to me, it's adequate. And uh, you guys, uh, peace out. Let's do the mantra. Freedom of freedom. Good to live in the free state of Florida where we have no mask mandates, no lockdowns, and no jab requirements under the great leadership of the Republican governor, DeSantis.